This video is sponsored by Native. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Danny, your friendly neighborhood DIYer, and this is another episode of Homemade Home, a series where I take you on my DIY journey to make over my 150 year old plus farmhouse into the home that I love. This was a very interesting video to create because I don't think I ever questioned a makeover with all of my design decisions so much in my life. And I don't know if that makes me more relatable to you guys because maybe you guys have painted something or done something and then you were just like, this is terrible. <laughs> I wanted to step a little outside my comfort zone and at times I think it might have backfired on me. And this whole makeover took way longer than I expected, so there was definitely that. But this story has a happy ending. And you know what? It taught me to listen to my gut, trust in my decisions. Without further ado, let's just get into this DIY story. Editor, roll the tape. Boop. Okay, DIY friends, so I'm gonna walk you through this back door entryway. There's something about saying back door entryway that just feels wrong. So what do we call this? The back door mudroom. Back door mudroom that's true. The back entryway, no, that's see. We're just gonna get over this. We're just gonna call it the back door entryway. <laughs> Okay, so we have a door here, but the issue here is that um, I actually broke the door like the first week we we moved in. However, I ain't got no monies, honeys, so we're just gonna make this work. Moving on, um, then, oh, we have a beautiful portrayal of a dirty rag that hangs in our back door, so beautiful. I also have this peg rack. This is actually the OG peg rack in my old house that I made for my entryway, and I put it back here because first of all it's really handy and we clearly just use it for dog stuff and we also have a little dog basket down there a stool that doesn't get used not once since we've lived here have we sat down to put our boots on back here like this is not like a sit down and put your boots on kind of place this is a get your flip-flops and get out just doesn't make any sense to have a bench here I thrifted that vase and then I have the squiggly things I love the squiggly things I think I'm gonna keep them them. I just don't know if I'm gonna keep them here and then the only thing actually there's two things that I like about this no nope, three things I like about this space one I think I like the peg rack I love the lamp because I actually thrifted this at the restore six bucks I love lamp I love lamp I thought that was a good deal and I love it because it's kind of farmhouse and it's kind of cool and I love the little Kenobi photo because it's just so dapper you know so I kind of just wanted this space to feel complete so we're gonna do it Radio. <laughs> Definitely never thought I would be a radio type of person. <laughs> Anyways, so you got the lay of the land, backdoor space, kind of a place for the dog. And honestly, I would love for it to just feel beautiful, like it's its own secret little space, you know? A little corner of whimsy and uniqueness. That's what I want for this space. Yes. My home is full of a lot of neutral, so for this space, I definitely just wanted to embrace a little bit of color. So let's take a look at my little mood board so we know where we're going with this. My entire design took inspiration from two things. One, if we go down into my inspo area here, you'll see this beautiful trend of bright greens paired with these lovely coral pinks. I'm obsessed. I love the trend, I love the color pairing, and I am down to embrace something a little more bold like this green as an accent wall. Let's not go crazy here, okay? So through that, I found this gorgeous green vintage floral Van Gogh wallpaper on Etsy. It was going for $169 a roll, which I think is pretty on point for most wallpapers, but it was such a small wall I wanted to do it on. And at that moment, I thought, buy it, darling, save your pennies. I'll make it myself. <laughs> So that's what I did. That was my plan, to paint my own kind of version of this wallpaper on my wall. Use it as inspo, but make it my own. 
Okay, back to the board. With that, as I mentioned, no one sits down in this area, so I wanted to build in a floating console table like this one that could be custom built into the space. I'll stain it black to pop against the green, and to make this space feel uber fun, I want to paint the back door a striking fun color of pink, aka the bare hue a watermelon slice to tie in the colors of the flowers on the mural wall. I'll also replace the current dog bin with something a little more trendy and finish the space off with a few vintage and modern items that tie in the rest of the home. I mean, super fun, right? Right? Okay, I'm just prepping all the paint before we start. Is this a poor decision? <laughs> okay. Getting started, before you paint, you guys know the drill. You need to clean your space of any dust, dirt, or debris. Wipe down that wall so it doesn't get in your paint. From there, I got my entire space prepped, taping off the edges and adding a drop sheet at my feet. Are you gonna give me a high five? For good luck. Yeah, thank you. You're the best. Okay, here we go. Fresh roller, fresh wall, fresh style, fresh attitude. Let's do it. <laughs> For the record, I'm not sure why I use such a tiny roller. I think I thought tiny wall, tiny roller, but that doesn't really add up. So anyways, if you do a small wall, just use a regular roller. Don't use a tiny one. You know, I don't hate it so far. It definitely looks really bright on camera, but um, well, I don't hate it. Okay. Moving past some serious self-doubt, I finished off this wall very quickly. It was very small. So I'm just gonna let this dry just a little bit. I went really light, really pushed the paint roller so that it would be light because I'm just trying to cover up all the white so that when I do go over with the same color, it is going to inherently look darker. So that's my hope, or at least that was my brain. That's my brain working its waves into the wall. Next step was to take a sponge and the same color paint and literally just start dabbing the wall over and over. This is a pretty monotonous task, which is why I have my headphones on at this point with some uplifting tunes. Oh yeah, look at that dabbing action. Just dab to the beat. Just dab to the beat. Just dab to the beat. So that dabbing went on for about an hour and a half, give or take. Eventually, I also changed over to a darker green to add some texture and depth. I think I'm almost done the backdrop. It's still wet, so you're gonna see a little bit of a sheen on it. This is a backdrop to what's actually going to be the main event on this, which is all this, the, the little tree branches with the cherry blossoms on it. I actually think it looks more blotchy on camera than it does in real life. So it might just be a trick of the, trick of the camera. All right, Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close up. Moving on to the tree portion of this programming, starting with the color Oxblood, I simply began from the bottom of the wall, taking on one tree branch at a time. It definitely helped me to first map out where the branches were going to start from the bottom, and then I could work my way up the wall, adding all those protruding branches that would sort of crisscross on top of each other in a satisfying, whimsical way. Once I had all the branches in place, I could finally go in with detail. To do that, I was using acrylic paints, a paint medium that I am very comfortable with. Adding in all the detail is always my favorite part to any painting. It's just really the part when you start to see the piece come alive. But it is scary. You sort of have to trust your first layer and know it's not going to look good until you start to get all the adding features in there to bring it to life. So painting murals with acrylics or any type of paint is really just about trusting the process and trusting your vision. And although tough on the body, I was really happy with the final product of the trees. It's definitely not in the style of the inspo wallpaper, but it's in my style. So I'm okay with that. Okay, so it's about six o'clock and I think I'm going to quit for the day. Now tomorrow I'm going to paint on all of the flowers and I don't think that's going to take me all day. So I think I'll be able to get started on the console table tomorrow as well. So cross fingers. 
Oh my god, I can't cross my fingers. There we go. Cross fingers, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> that was one heck of a day one. I am simply perspiring thinking of painting that mural all over again. But am I worried that I smell of hard work and determination? Nay, nay, my friends, nay, nay. And that is because I smell of sweet palm leaf and bergamot brought to you by the sponsor of today's episode, Native. DOI friends, you know that I talk about Native all the time. They are my go-to, one and only, all for nothing deodorant brand that I use every day of my life. Their deodorants come in the most delicious scents I have ever smelled in my life. And the best part is it's packed with ingredients that you can understand. Coconut oil, shea butter, flower oil, plants. And if you don't know, they break it down for you right on their website. It's just super transparent. And of course, they are aluminum, paraben, and sulfate free, as well as vegan and cruelty free. It's just a full package of love, really. DIYing all day, I appreciate a deodorant brand that isn't sticky, it dries quickly, and it keeps me smelling fresh all day long, even through my DIY sweat drench, okay? And that happens often. I ordered Paradise Flower and Amber, which honestly smells the equivalent of fresh flowers. I don't know how else to explain that. Tangerine and citrus blossom, which is my personal fave. I will literally bathe in anything citrus. Like, no word of a lie. And palm leaf and bergamot, which I can't really describe the scent. The way I would describe it is, I feel like I'm in the middle of a jungle and there's a small waterfall and I'm just like casually showering in the waterfall and like there's flowers in my hair and there's just a smell radiating off of my body. Yep. Three deodorants are normally $36, but if you use my link and code DIYDanny5, you'll get them for $24, that's 33% off. They also have free shipping to the US, and you all must know that Native has more than just deodorant, they also do amazing body washes and toothpaste, and with my code, you can get 20% off any body wash or toothpaste. So treat yourself and let me know if you guys have been using Native. What's your favorite scent? I'm so curious to know kind of where people gravitate towards, so let me know in the comment section below. So, without further ado, let's get back to the action. Question, does it look like I'm standing in a forest right now? It's actually sunny out today, which I'm just like living for. And I think once we get the flowers on and we add the color, I just think it's all gonna look so, 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 so good. Wow, that's a big bug. What is that? <laughs> okay, so we're gonna start painting the flowers. Before we do that, I actually just wanted to recommend something to you guys. It's called A Year in Flowers. This is written by Aaron. Benzakeen with Jill Georgeson and Julie Chai. It's absolutely stunning. This is more about like flower arrangements um, and when to pick them, but the photography in this book is absolutely stunning. Like it's just, as a visual person, I love drawing flowers and this is just like next level. I'm just a really big fan of it. And it's on Amazon, so I will link it down below for you, okay? So to get started, I'm going with that beautiful uh, watermelon pink color. This is going to be the same color as the door, so this is gonna give us a good indication of the color. Let's get started. Honestly, painting those flowers took me all day, literally all day, but I really can't complain. I mean, I spent my entire day painting flowers on a wall. I mean, what a dream, right? <sighs> well, it is much later. What time is it? Oh my goodness, where's my phone? It's almost 10? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, it just, it just did. It just took a long time. But either way, um, it's done. It's done, check that out. I mean, the colors probably look horrible under this lighting right now, but I will show it to you in the morning. And uh, what can I do for you, boo? 
So tomorrow we are building a table and uh, it's definitely not gonna take all day, so that's a bonus. So I'll see you tomorrow. Oh no, pup up. It's not a nice day out, friend. I don't wanna do anything but like play Nintendo on the couch. But I'm persevering. I am motivating myself to just do. We're gonna get this console table done, hell or high water. Attempting to use my plywood I already had in my wood stash, I decided to build my console table with this 2x4 half inch sheet of maple plywood. I would have preferred 3 quarter inch, but the cost of wood is real steep right now, friends, and I'm working with what I got. My first goal was to use a straight edge and map out all my cuts before I ventured into the dark, rainy unknown of the outside. Now, the challenge with my console table is that I am custom building it into this space and that space has this little corner piece that juts out because of course it's never easy for me, right? But it is completely custom so it was making sure I had all the right measurements, overcompensating a little bit just to make sure that that corner fits right but uh, you know, it's just never easy. Well, if there's any bright side to this day is that it did stop raining hopefully. So that's nice. Real nice. Forging onward, rain or not, using my handy Craig Jig circular saw guide and my circular saw, I got all my cuts made on my 2x4 sheet. I love this guide so much and what I did was I put a styrofoam sheet underneath my board and set my blade depth appropriately so I could easily make all my cuts on top of the table without worrying that I was going to cut into any material that wasn't intended to be cut. And from there, I was able to make any of my smaller cuts on my miter saw. I am a big fan of this 12 inch sliding compound miter saw because it means I can cut board sizes up to 12 inches, which is so handy for so many projects. Just noting this for anyone looking to level up their miter saw game, this is the one for you. And just like that, I had all my pieces I needed to put this console table together. Finally, back in the warmth and comfort of our little DIY studio, I mapped out the corner sections that needed to be removed from the top and bottom and removed those sections using my jiggity saw. From there, using my Craig jig, I drilled pocket holes on any joining pieces and began to assemble this console table, except for the top, to make the staining process much easier. Now, I built this with a half inch plywood because that is what I had. Like I said before, if I had a three quarter inch plywood, I definitely would have built it with that. And I was finding that the middle section, the lid was, it had a little bit of flex because it wasn't a thick wood material. So I decided that I was going to cut a middle brace just to make sure that there was enough support there for anything I put on top of this console table. I think this is a really good lesson that you always need to be flexible with your projects and always account for other things like mistakes or things you need to add. You just never know. So we're gonna have like a little cubbies, two cubbies in the middle, but it's also gonna give that middle board just a little bit more structure. So I feel a lot better about that. Of course, I got the entire thing sanded and attached my new middle brace and then decided to give this a more professional finished look and hid my plywood edges with edge banding, which is a really annoying process and I dislike very much, but I do think it's worth it in the long run. And from there, I was finally ready to stain. To stain this piece, I used Verithane one step stain and polyurethane in the color classic black satin. I love a good black wood stain because what it does is it still keeps the character of the wood grain in the board while also giving you the look that you want at the end. Because I was going for a sophisticated look and black was definitely the route to go. Actually, this was my first time using a one-step product, so it contained the stain and finish in one, which should have cut down on time, but it really didn't. Now, this product was super thick, and my first mistake was using a sponge brush to apply it. It's very thick, and I found that the sponge created a really splotchy look when it was dry. So as you can see, you can really see those splotchy lines. So I did end up having to put a second coat on the following day with a brush, but by doing so, I feel like I had lost a lot of that wood texture because a stain like this really sits on top of the wood. This was such a shame because it didn't really end up giving me the end look that I wanted because it was so thick. If I had applied it with a brush from the get-go, I'm pretty sure it would have been fine. It is what it is. Store is filthy. Absolutely filthy. Oh, there's a ladybug inside there. So day four was about the door. <laughs> 
I started this lovely rainy day again off by cleaning down the door, removing any dust, dirt, and debris. I also got the current door fixtures removed for good and began to tape off any areas I didn't want painted. Ooh, Nelly. She bold. She real bold. On the first application, I wasn't hating it. Was it bold? Yes, but I felt like I needed a push out of my comfort zone, so we're embracing it, folks. We're embracing it. Now, the paint I'm using is an exterior satin enamel. This means it's built to withstand more tough conditions, wet or dry, and with the dog coming in and out of this space, I needed all the help I could get. I mean, the color was fun. So while I waited for the door to dry, I first took off my old peg rack and used the same black stain to cover the entire piece to match my console table. Give it a bit of a facelift. And if anyone was wondering how I plan to secure this console table to the wall, I had leftover 10 inch brackets from my living room makeover. So I decided these would be the perfect way to hold my 10 inch console table and make it feel aligned with my living room. Did I plan that ahead of time? Oh yes. Uh-huh. 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 Yeah, I don't get it. I'm trying to get all the doorknob stuff done. <laughs> Why do they make this so challenging? Yeah, installing door handles normally isn't that much of a struggle for me, but that day was particularly challenging for some reason. I got the deadbolt lock secured with no issues, but when I went to install the actual handle part, I could not figure out why this piece didn't fit. It wasn't until after I realized that the door handle was set for a right hand uh, door handle versus a left side door handle, so that was where all the confusion ended up being. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, beyond my frazzled hair. Um, okay, the hardware did finally go on, and then I turned off like the, the additional light I had in this corner, and the door looks neon orange. Like, it's not even just like a cute pink, it's like neon. No, guys, we can't. <laughs> so, you know what? I'm gonna paint it. This is literally what happened one year ago when I painted my <laughs> cabinet yellow and then I had a really bad reaction and then I just painted it black. Guys, I hate it. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're gonna paint the door black. <laughs> yep, I painted it black. First coat of paint has been made. Let's go over to the natural light where there is none. I have one coat of paint on a door now, a console table that's still drying, a rack that's still drying, and that's about it. I honestly, I hope it's a less crappy day tomorrow. I mean, it's supposed to be, I was gonna say, floggy. <laughs> Cloudy and foggy. <laughs> I feel sad that I had to paint over that color. I did really like it, but it was orange. Like, it was like highlighter orange. <sighs> Just feel a little deflated. I'll see you tomorrow. We'll see how things go. And uh, hopefully by tomorrow, we're putting this whole space together. So let's cross fingers. See you then. I think we're officially on probably day five of this rainy week. I hate it. This peg rack is, uh, she's still drying. Hurry up. I am not wearing a paint shirt today. That means we're not painting today. So with my console table finally dry, I got the top secured to the piece and I was finally ready to install it into the space. We have a console table. We have a console table. No room for legs because she's gonna flow today. What thought I had though was that uh, I didn't dry fit this. 
Yeah, so call this what you want, rookie mistake, whatever, but this is something that I knew to do. I think I just got caught up in the excitement of having the console table and just kind of getting it finished. Once it was built before the edge banding, before the sanding, before the staining, walk the piece over to the wall, make sure it fits so that when you go to put it in, when it's all finished and looking beautiful, you don't run into issues. And I didn't do that. I did not do that. How do I? <laughs> yep. So I took the thing apart, cut one quarter off both the top and bottom on the right side, put the whole thing back together and attempted fit number two. It's going to fit. I feel good about this one. Wait, is this, is this first try? Yeah, the first try. This is first try. Yay! What's the crowd in it? <laughs> I don't think that's the crowd in it. I've only wrecked all of my walls. Trim has been removed. And walls have been ruined. Realistically, I just was a quarter inch too much. It's better than me, a quarter inch too small. Damn Skippy. With the console table success behind me now, I did get my new peg rack secured to the wall, which looks superb, may I add. I wanna show you something really cool that I wanted to put into this space, and I think I came to it. This was $50. Check this out. It is a cool, vintage-looking wall phone. How fun is this? Now, I'm not actually going to connect the cord. I thought this was just really fun, so we're gonna hang this up in the space. I think the brown is going to be a nice pop, but the black accents really go with everything else. D-A-N-I-E. Yeah, hi, Sanity? Yeah, um, I was just uh, wondering if you could send me my yeah, yeah, I can hold, no problem. Yeah, hi, um, yeah, so I was just wondering if you could send me- Yeah, oh, oh, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll call back later. Okay, thanks. <laughs> yeah, they never called back, but we were on the finish line, so now all that was left to do was to put in the final pieces to make this space come together. Yes, DOI friends, I expected this entire design to be a total fail, but I gotta say, I absolutely love it. From this unique painted floral wall that gives the back corner so much energy and life, to these lovely unique conversation pieces like a telephone that not only looks super cool, but has become a stylish, functional place for dog treats at the back door. DIY friends, thank you so much for watching this tiny yet big makeover. I feel like this is gonna be a toss up with some of you. I think it might be really 50-50 on how some of you feel about it, but honestly, I love it. I love that it brings a uniqueness and a pop of color in that back corner. It's exactly what I wanted from this makeover. There were some bumps along the way, but that's okay. We overcame them. We saw the light at the end of the tunnel, and at the end, I am super happy with the final product. Of course, a big thanks to the sponsor of today's episode, Native. Use the link in my description box with the code DIYDanny5 to get your box set for only $24. If you're new here, do not forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any more DIY transformations. DIY friends, as always, stay positive, stay creative, and keep on DIYing. Bye-bye.